I am okay. so happy to have on the phone the one and only globe-trotting flautist, Walter, Walter Kellerman. It's so good to see you. Ta- you're calling in from South Africa, aren't you? Yes, from all the way from South Africa. Thank you, Cindy. We're, we're nice in, to hear your voice. It's great to hear you. We're, we're in South Africa. Are you calling in from, Walter? In Johannesburg. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Well, yes. you know, you have. I have to introduce you to people. I have known you for a few years here. I was so excited when you got your 2015 Grammy Award for that fantastic piece, uh, Winds of Some Sorrow, that you did with uh, Ricky Cash, which is fabulous. But, I'm, I mean, I also loved Love Language, was just beautiful. But you know what? I even I even had the CD before both of those that you put out. Um, oh yes, yeah, yeah, Bunzi. yes, yeah. That was, yeah. They, um, you know, I was very proud of that one too. It's um, I've always tried to do. You know, I've really been obsessive with my with the albums that I put out. So, really, sort of tried to go as far as I possibly could. You know, with the albums, just try and take as much care as I can and um, completely overdo it. <laughs> well, I think I, maybe I, it takes that. You know, I think I think we kind of, as I've noticed this with excellent musicians and successful ones, that they do have to be obsessive with their work. It's it's kind of all consuming when you're in a project. It is, it is really, and I just I love this new release. I I have it in my hands here, Symphonic Soweto, a tribute to Nelson Mandela. The so is it Soweto? I guess right. Soweto, yes. Soweto That's Gospel right. Choir. And you got the one and only a uh, very, very talented and famous Angelique Kijo um in here as well. And um this one um I can tell the, the obsessiveness <laughs> coming out because this was a <laughs> this was a huge, huge project. I mean, um and number one, it's not easy to do and mic and record choirs and and you were able to capture them beautifully um on this very very wonderful release and but beyond that you know that's the technical part beyond that there's this amazing spirit and soul that comes through i play your music um on kuos uh, in sedona and i you know i play a lot of wonderful music but there's something about your music voter that just jumps out on the radio. And I, I have been in radio most all my life. And I, I, oh, yeah. I know some music does. Some music kind of goes in the background. But your music, and I don't know what it is. I think it's got to be your soul. Your music just <laughs> comes right through the radio and kind of stops me sometimes. If I hear it, I just go, wow, that sounds so good. So I don't know what that skill is that you have, but you've got oh. it, Woder. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. That's so nice to hear that. Um, you know, I, I think, um, but as you say, I think in this industry, you, you have to be a little bit obsessive and obsessed. Um, you know, it sort of goes goes with the job. And um, because so many albums uh, get released every year, so to stand out, you really have to do something special and you really, really have to sort of go the extra mile, you know. So, um, you know, it's, it's um I think it's part of part of, you know, our industry. Well, we like you know, it. you ha you are very, very well recognized of course in South Africa. You've gotten awards there. They have their version just like we have in Hawaii. We have uh, a version of the uh, music awards here. You have the South African Music Awards. You've won <clears throat> three. They're called is it S A M A Sama? Sama South African Sama, Music. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually won won six of those. You won six, wow! Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's lovely to be recognised at home. You know, that's still it's the most special because that's the people that you know and the people that you connect with every day, recognising you. So you know, I, I do value those. They've got a special place for me. Well, it, not only yeah. is it a special place, I'm sure it's inspired others because. You've been able to cross borders and boundaries, and um, there's it's not easy. And I think a lot of people who know you, and there's a lot of people in the, the Grammy community who know you, but they don't, I don't think, recognize enough how difficult it is to be a musician who's from South Africa and having crossed those borders and boundaries and been able 
to reach the heights. I know Ricky, of course, in India did as well, but yeah. um, this is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think it, it sort of it needs a natural curiosity, which um, just comes, so it does come naturally to me. You know, I've always been curious. And I've always listened very widely. So I actually find it find it easier to cross borders than not to cross them. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, and uh, for this album, um, it was actually harder than usual because I tried to stay within the uh, the South African framework because you know it is a South African album. It's it's about the um, history of Soweto and Nelson Mandela. And uh, so we took some of the um, the songs, popular songs of the last few decades, and we arranged that for, for flute, choir, and symphony orchestra, and sometimes solo voice as well. Um, and for those, I really had to stay within the the you know the boundaries of of uh, of the genre. Um, and I found that pretty hard because my natural <laughs> thing that I've sort of developed over the years is just to allow the other influences to come out, mm-hmm. you know, and and I, I find myself playing a, a solo, and then I'm, I listen back to it, and I'm going, oh no, that sounds Irish, or that's got a <laughs> flamen- flamenco flavor. Let me redo it again. So I actually found that quite hard um, to do that, and still have the imagination and the spirit, or my, you know, my own imagination spirit come through, but stay within those boundaries. Um, that was quite. Um, challenging, actually, but um, did manage in the end. Well, and, you, you, uh, that's you, what I love about each project. It you know it brings its own challenges, um, and and um, really allows you to grow and and um, develop. Well, you you are a world citizen, and you you travel quite a bit of the time. You know, yeah. um, and it's not easy because. I mean, South Africa is a long, expensive <laughs> flight away from most places that you're going to be going exactly. to. Exactly, um, yeah. And you make a point of, of coming, of course, to the Grammys and some of the indie events, and, and you're very, very active. So I, how how often are you on the road, Woter? I'm on the road all the time, and actually too much. I, I'm pretty tired of being on the road. <laughs> um <laughs> So I want to. I do want to take a little break, um, but I have been traveling a lot because I also spend a lot of time in Australia. So I, I do, you know, I spend the bulk of my time between Johannesburg, um, well, South Africa in general, and Australia, um, and then I spend some time in India and quite a bit of time in the U.S. as well. So mm. um, you know, <laughs> that's and, all around and, the world. That is definitely yeah. And, and, <laughs> And the problem is it doesn't sort of come in, in convenient, you know, bits. I'm, no. I'm always, you know, I'm always, it's not like I do all my South African concerts at, in one long stretch and then I go, no, unfortunately, it's to and fro all the time. And, um, you know, so I think it, it is a difficult thing because as a musician, opportunities are hard to come by. So when mm. they do come, it's very important to grab them. You know, you uh, because every opportunity could lead to another whole train of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, so you really have to think twice if it's if it's something good and it's and, and it's an opportunity. You really have to think twice before saying no. So I've been saying yes to everything I could possibly do wow. if it is you know if it's musically satisfying um, and and it pays the bills. Then I like say yes ninety nine percent of the time, but it does. Mm-hmm in the end, exhaust you. <laughs> it, well, it, yeah, on those long, long flights. I have to get you. I have a new version of my book, um, in, of the travel book I did. I, I did a new version, part two, of How to Fly with Less Stress, and I'll send you a, I'll send you a Kindle version. Because oh, ha- okay. Yeah, because it has a lot of exercises you can do on the plane that will help you relax and and also stay, you know, to the point where the circulation going. You're tall, and on these, <laughs> you, you know, there's, some of these planes don't give you a lot of leg room. <laughs> it is, like, <laughs> and, and um, you know, I, I always fly economy because it's just too. You don't. Like, oh my gosh, motor. Oh, so yeah. so getting the so getting the Grammy, getting the Grammy and all these awards didn't put you up a class, huh? 
<laughs> no. no. <laughs> it just allowed me to travel more. <laughs> well, I know you did play Australia. You, you you played the Byron Bay Festival, which I guess that's become a huge thing. I know you've done that. And and what I, is it the kind of that feeling that um, there is this wonderful feeling in Australia? What drew you to some of the festivals in Australia? Well, um, Australia is a surprisingly cultural you know, there's this con- this perception of Australians not being very cultured, but if you actually go there, there's there's a huge amount of culture and music, especially live music, happening, and um, so it it is really a beautiful place to visit. And um, I also have um, family there, so I combine. You know, I, I go to some special trouble to um, to arrange concerts there. So the the Byron Bay. Uh, Blues Fest, I think, is Australia's biggest festival, and that was a treat to play. You know, mm. um, um, it was really, really amazing. Some beautiful artists. Gregory Porter was there. Um, you know, Santana was was playing there. Wow. Um, you know, Jethro Tull played there. I met Ian Anderson. Did, did you get to meet him? You did meet him? Yes, I met him. So it was really lovely. We had a long flute talk. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. Did so he influence really nice. you? What yeah. was he an influence in your life? Because I know you you're pretty very animated. Much. Yeah, you're very animated when you play, and and you're also very colorful. I love the uh, the wonderful colors that you wear. I think that a lot of them represent um, South Africa, don't they? That's right. But you know, there's the sort of concept of of using all kinds of colors and just being very creative does come from Ian Anderson. You know, because he was mm-hmm. very out of the box. And I think he he influenced a lot of people, and so I'm I'm very influenced. It was, you know, really special for me to meet him and to connect. He, the interesting thing he told me was that the reason he started doing these extra sounds on the flute is because he couldn't get the normal sounds. He couldn't make a beautiful normal mm-hmm. plain tone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, no, I and get that. That drove him to do all kinds of other things. I I, I kind of get that. My sister was a concert flautist. I was a frustrated flautist. I didn't have the. Uh, <laughs> I just I just pick it up and play, but I never had the discipline to get to the level you're at. And when I, I have to say, um, if if people haven't heard Woter Kellerman before, you should go to Woter Kellerman. It's spelled W O U T E R K E L L E R M A N dot net, um, because you have a lot of your music up there. Also links to YouTube. Um, and you you do have quite a wealth of of wonderful uh, music people can listen to, and you are an excellent flautist. And I've been around uh, flautists and 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 no flute music. And I and I have to say, when I first heard, and I've been in the business a long time in radio, and I played some of the early stuff of of Ian Anderson's and Jethro Tull, and he was extremely creative, and there was good songs. But he was not an excellent flautist. I think he got better as he went on. But he, he, that's right. He, but, but truthfully, I heard him. I went, you know, the guy's really creative, but he's not a great flautist. <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, in in the classical world, or um, you know, um, he hasn't done the, the the training that would get him to a um, what what you know to a, a, a great level. Um, mm-hmm. But he, yeah, he's he's benefited. With the, the amazing thing that he does is just being creative yeah. and coming up with amazing things. But th- that's what I try and do. I try and um, have both of those. You know, mm-hmm. I, I try to. I still do um, classical concerts every year. Oh, do and, you? Um, so I, I keep that that side up. And for me, the sort of root of of all my playing is is a is a beautiful sound. You know, I, I do focus on. On, on on sound and trying mm-hmm. to be able and to be able to create all kinds of colors in your sound and to mm. to play a, a simple phrase beautifully i mm-hmm. think is just the most important thing for me personally and then all the other effects and extended techniques for me are extras mm. you know? very good point and yeah. i think that makes a difference from the little flute playing i've done and 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 I certainly appreciate music more than play it but I've noticed that, like, when you're in the center of a tone in a flute, when you're right in the very center, and that center connects to the soul, there is some extra sound. And I think there's no mistake that Krishna was a flute player, right? There is, yeah. there is something about that, that magic of, of a flute that can convey it. I kind of wondered how, 
when, when you have a symphony that you're playing and working with, um, it, it's interesting because there's certainly tons of, of music and albums with people singing with the choir, uh, but not so many flute players with the choir. So how did you uh, work with that harmonics and all the, the richness of the Soweto Gospel Choir with your flute? Yeah, um, actually the flute goes very well with, with the choir. Um, um, voice and flute, I think because they both use, they're both natural. You know, the flute is sort of a translation of the voice, really, because it's, you play it in the same way as you would sing. Mm. And um, and they, they, it was quite a natural fit, but it wasn't such a natural fit to get the choir and the orchestra together. Um, you know, the, 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 the African choir's, love to sing just a little bit flat. They sing mm. just under the note. And uh-huh. they, they sing with so much passion that it seems to lift the um, pitch um, in, into tune. And uh, and it's not that it's out of tune. It's expressive mm-hmm. singing, uh-huh. you know. Uh-huh. While the, the orchestra is the opposite. They like to go just a little bit sharp, mm. you know. Um, most uh, in, in the pop world, the, the frequency of A is 440 hertz. Mm-hmm. Um, but the symphonies orchestras all over the world go just a bit sharper than that. They play 442, 444. Ah. They, 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 they like to go just a touch sharp to, to bring some extra excitement into the music. I didn't know so that. We, yeah, so it was very interesting. You know, we discovered very early on that we had a bit of a problem. <laughs> 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 what's, what's that tool you get in Pro Tools that brings the – what's that that tool that brings everything up and makes them equal? And, yeah, and, yeah, you can do Melodyne or Autotune. Yeah. Ah, yes, Autotune, and, and, yeah. All those things, post-production, you know. But, but that changes it, yeah. basically find, find a good way, an order of recording that, that would make the most holistic sense. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, so we we had to repeat and redo a lot of the things, and that's where the my obsessive nature came in handy. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is this is also a massive piece because it's not just you playing flute. Obviously, um, you did the amazing work of arranging and 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 there's fabulous um, compositions in here as well. Yes. And you worked with some other people on some arrangements as well. And, and then we want to bring in, of course, the uh, amazing talents uh, and, and the legendary singing of Angelique Cujo, who's, who's won many, many awards, right? Yes, she, was, she won the, the Grammy um, in 2015 and 2016, mm-hmm. the World Music Grammy. She's amazing. She was just such a thrill to work with. And, um, yes, for the arrangements, I actually work with some beautiful arrangers, some amazing arrangers, and um, because I'm... You know, I do arrange, but I, I one of my big skills is that I know what I'm what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not that good at. Mm-hmm. So the arranging, I'm not the world's best arranger. So I I um, used I, I combined with arrangers that had amazing skills, and um, and I think that really helped a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it was really exhausting to put all these. Because all the all the music had to be arranged and you know um, scored, uh, you know for, for whole orchestra, and then mm. we had to go into the studio and record them, mm-hmm. and uh, it was really extremely challenging and expensive exercise to 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 do. Um, but you know, you listen to a, a few songs that are that came out beautifully. And it just makes it all worthwhile. Well, you know that that is the bottom line. Uh, except, hopefully, you can get some funding. You, you've been so generous. You did uh, on that beautiful love's language. You you gave uh, proceeds to uh, a very important cause that you care about. SOS Children's Villages in South Africa. Yeah. Um, and again, yeah. we don't know because we're so locked into our life. I mean, most people haven't been to South Africa. I mean, were you born in Johannesburg? Where were you born in South Africa? Yes, I was born in Johannesburg, born and bred. I spent uh, nearly all of my life um, in Johannesburg. So you were um, right and, there. You, know, you saw everything happening and unfolding with Nelson Mandela. Exactly. Yeah, and that's why he's so special. You know, he, he's just such a special, special figurehead and just such a beautiful person. You know, he spent 27 years in jail, and I don't think any of us would know how it feels to, to spend 
and, uh, and when he came out of jail, he was so incredibly forgiving, so magnanimous, um, and he became a leader for all his people, even the people that, that oppressed him. And that's just such an incredible example, you know, and such a great message of tolerance that, that I think the world really needs at the moment. And, and mm -hmm. that's my, the main reason is, we, we, is why we've done this album. I, I worked very closely with the Nelson Mandela Foundation. And um, so the main reason is to, to broadcast his message of tolerance and, and to, mm -hmm. to let the people know about it. You know, and, and I, it's such a beautiful example to follow. How did you feel as a child and in the middle of the history of, of, of a, a country torn apart in the midst of that and at the same time having your heart go out to them and then seeing the, the what it took to overcome some of the prejudice and, and then to actually see that evolution where actually uh, the day when he was freed and to be there when he died, I mean, that must have influenced your entire consciousness. It did. You know, it was, um, you know, um, it, it was just an incredible journey to, to follow and um, you know when we were young in the midst of the apartheid years the uh, the media was controlled by the government mm. so we most of what happened we didn't know about wow um, you know we, we didn't know uh, about a lot of the uh, the really bad things that, that happened we only did discover that later wow um, and um, but you know we were always I was always um, for you know, for a full and equal uh, democracy, and it was just so beautiful to see it happen, and and to to it was such a feeling of euphoria after uh, '96 when we had our first de de democratic elections, mm -hmm. and people really um, in South Africa get along beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I, I don't know why, but you know we. Um, racism is actually, um, in my view, I mean, there's much less racism here than many other places in the world. Wow. You know? that, and, I, did, um, I wasn't aware. I was wondering about that. But I've never been to South Africa, and I've heard so much about it. And, and a lot of people say it's a beautiful place. And But then at the same time, look at the, the history that is so powerful there and, and what's happened. And, and I know you also did a, a song called Voice of Hope. Uh, which is a work you did uh, in dedication to Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Yes, that's, um, you know, he's been uh, an, a, a parallel figurehead and just uh, just as amazing as Nelson Mandela. And, um, you know, so I actually asked Rick, Ricky to join me on this song. So he he wrote that song. Oh, uh, Ricky Cash? Yes. Oh, I didn't know Ricky wrote that. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And... Um, so um, that I think that you know that was our dedication to to him. Um, you know the in Soweto. Um, I don't. You might um, not be aware, but Soweto is short for South Western Townships. I didn't which know is, that. Um, which is um, you know in Johannesburg in the apartheid years, the, the the black and white people were separated, and so the black people were moved to the southwestern side of town and that became Soweto and um, we have um, 11 official languages in South Africa um, Afrikaans which is a, a uh, which has a Dutch origin then there's English and then there's mm. nine official black languages we actually have oh. more but nine official ones and each language has got its own culture and its own dance and its own music mm. so all these people were living together in Soweto and it's it became a very rich place to be, um, and still is, um, a sort of a melting pot of cultures, mm. a very exciting place for musicians and artists. So are it, now how did you decide that you wanted to, and how did you go about getting uh, the Soweto, the choir, uh, to work with you? And it must have been a huge amount of rehearsals involved, too. Yes, um, definitely. The, well, we, we did one song together on the last album, Mm -hmm. And we just loved working together. So we, you know, and after speaking to the Nelson Mandela Foundation, who sort of encouraged us to do this album, uh, because, you know, next year is the centenary of Nelson Mandela's oh, birth. Oh, wow. He, w he would have been 100 years next year. So they encouraged us to do this album, and it was such a natural fit. 
um, for for myself and Soweto to carry on after having done that song. And they we also did uh, they also sang on Ricky's album um, Shanti Samsara last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so it was quite a natural. You know, we we have been working together for a while, and um, so it was quite a natural flow. Um, to uh, and and it was a beautiful experience, very interesting as well because you know everybody comes from a different way, the different place, the western mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 the local cultures mixing together like you know like they haven't like in the past they where they weren't really allowed to mix together, and so it was just an incredible experience to to make that happen. Well, there's nothing like a good gospel choir to lift your soul. I tell you, I I mean, I am so, I know, I am so blown away when I hear a good gospel choir. You know, it's like, wow, they just, they just bring your spirits right up. But then you put them with this uh, amazing symphony um, that you found as well. It's called KwaZulu. Uh, Natal. Kwazulu. How do you pronounce that? Yes, yeah, KwaZulu, KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal Philharmonic Philharmonic Orchestra. And yeah, they they South Africa's number one symphony orchestra. Wow! So, yeah, they were very keen um, to join us, and they they came to the party and made it possible for us financially to um, to work with them. And wow. um, yeah, so it was really we could have used different orchestras, but we wanted a South African orchestra because they would understand the South African music better. Yeah, and uh, so even though you know a symphony orchestra. And it that comes from the from the western side uh, of culture, but they still uh, the people who play there grew up um, also you know in a combination of hearing a combination of sounds and and being more familiar with the South African sounds. So it was important to us to to have a South African orchestra in there. Did you have you done had a chance to play it in public down there yet? No, we you know we just. Uh, we just got back a week ago after mixing and mastering um, in LA mm-hmm. and uh, doing a, a tour. We did a promotional tour in the US. And so we just got back and really nobody has heard it. <laughs> so wow. We, we're just sitting on the release. Um, it'll be out on Friday. And, uh, and then, um, you know, um, we'll push it as much as we can. Uh, but yeah, uh, for in South Africa, I think we'll get most of the attention next year when it's uh, Nelson Mandela's centenary. Are you going to play there? Yes, we'll we'll perform um, we'll perform the the show, and uh, the Nelson Mandela Foundation has already asked us to do it all over the world. Oh, really? Um, uh, yes, the the date is still to be confirmed, uh, wow. dates and places, but. They, as part of uh, the centenary ce- celebrations, um, we will perform this. I know that you submitted it for the Grammy consideration in world music, and um, you have you have such a charming, open nature, and you're so humble um, that you know you you've you've made so many wonderful friends with the the Grammy community, and and it's just so lovely. I know you were involved uh, last year. You were at the uh, Peace Awards that I think uh, was also put on yeah. a wonderful mm-hmm. gathering there, and you've been involved yeah. in in so many uh, wonderful things. But you know, here you are traveling. What what are some of the highlights uh, of some of the performances you've had a chance to play and be at some amazing events? What were some of the highlights as you look back over the last couple of years of the the key uh, opportunities you had to meet and play at great places? Like Carnegie Hall, you were at a couple times, right? Yeah, yeah. We played there 2014 and 2015, and that was beautiful. It was exquisite for us to to perform there and to just be there where we've so many of the people that I admire have played there. It was really an incredible experience to be there and and just to experience because you know we make the music in South Africa, and uh, we never know how well it will be received mm-hmm. um, in a completely different side of the world and you know and we're always so grateful and surprised that people seem to get what we're trying to say and get it does seem music does seem to be a a universal language that does cross uh, cultural barriers Um, because I mean my the way I grew up and the way you grew up um, is 
completely different and our environments were completely different mm -hmm. but you you can listen to the music and you can still get the message yeah you know yeah. and and um that just it's really quite magical to think about that um so yeah and some other highlights were i i played at the closing ceremony of the 2010 soccer world cup wow um it was for 700 million people. 700 million people. Wow, that's a hard <laughs> that's a hard number to beat. That was amazing. Wow. Yeah, that was that was amazing for a for a flute player to get the chance mm -hmm. um, to play because it's normally the vocalist that gets the opportunity and um, so that was that was a really special moment for me, you know, and um uh, you know, there's there's been so many highlights of traveling, playing in China and um, um, playing in Australia and, you know, and in Germany, in Berlin. And India, yeah. India very much. Um, I've been there a few times. One of the highlights is playing at the Rajasthan Folk Festival. Mm. Um, it's a national folk festival two years ago. Um, and, you know, to do a collaboration with the folk musicians from the countryside who don't speak English. We had a translator, um, you know, we had to um, find common ground and be so amazed that, you know, that we, we could find common ground and make, make music together and have a beautiful time together. Um, also with the Indian classical mu musicians. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, we, we did a, a dawn concert Half past, half past four in the morning. So we start playing and um, we play as the sun comes up behind us. Wow. That was a very special moment. Well, I'm actually going to, to India next week. I'm going to Bangalore to, to oh. play in Ricky's concert. He's, he's um, hosting a, a beautiful film festival there. Oh, how um, wonderful. All about, all about environmental issues. And he'll have a big gala concert and um, I'll be joining him for that. Wow. Uh, what, what kind of flute do you play, Walter? Well, I the, I have a gold Nagahara flute. Mm. It's, a, it's a Japanese flute maker that's uh, based in Boston. Um, and that's also the, the same brand that James Galway plays. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's my... Uh, but, you know, there's actually um, many, many good types of flutes that, that one can play and yeah. it's mostly the player that can hear the difference not so much the <laughs> listener <laughs> it is, the gold is impressive I know Powell and Haynes you know and and my sister actually had a gold I think Haynes or I don't know she, I think she's uh, yeah, still I have a gold Powell as well yeah that was the that was the last flute I played before but that that came from Germany it was tuned at 444 it's ah. tuned higher because people in Germany, the orchestras, they play at a higher pitch huh. than, uh, than the rest of us. And um, so it was sometimes hard to keep in tune. I bet, I bet, um, yeah. I, well, we have to give a shout-out to Tulsi, who is just um, always there helping out, and, and she's just such a loving soul, and, and, and she's always, it's so nice to meet her, and, and, and together we get to learn more about what you're doing. She's just, just so sweet and nice. People can actually follow you and, and, and see your adventures with you and, and your lovely dog <laughs> 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 on Facebook, right? What's uh, Yeah. Do uh, you have a golden retriever or a white? What kind of dog? No, that's, uh, the golden retriever is Ricky's. Ricky's uh, oh, that's Ricky's dog. So we have, yeah, we have, we have whenever, the, whenever we're there, we, we take photos with Hachi. Hachi, He's yeah. a golden retriever. Oh, that and, is and, right, and, yeah. And he's a, He's really the head of the household in, in <laughs> at Ricky's place. Ricky is just, um, you know, he really runs the household there. So, um, but uh, yeah, we love animals, and Tulsi's amazing. She's a she fantastic is. manager. Yes, she's and wonderful. A lovely person to have, you know, um, and she's as she she is as passionate as I am about the music and to to send the message out there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, put some good music with good energy. You know, that's basically our mission. Well, together. you do it. You do it. And and the truth is, um, even if you have great music, and a lot of people do, I mean, yours is great, to get it out there and to market it and to do the social media and to do all the other stuff is, is a full-time job in itself. 
Yes, it, it is. You know, the, the days when you can just be a musician, those are definitely, um, for 99% of the people, those are over. You know, you have to run your music like a business. Mm-hmm. And you have to get involved and, and do your own um, social media, um, you know, arrange your own concerts. Uh, many, a lot of the time, often I have to set up my own sound equipment, you oh, know. Yeah. Um, so we're very good at that, me and my band. We can set up in a half an hour, we can set up a whole, you know, for a whole concert. And, um, and all the admin and, um, you know, promotion advertising all comes down to the musician so it becomes a, a really challenging near impossible job to mm-hmm. to do uh, you know it it really is hard so we, we have to work very hard and many hours but it's very satisfying and we're passionate about it so it doesn't feel like work well you know thank you for that that's true because i tell you when you look at uh, the money return and the amount of money you have to spend to create a piece like Symphonic Soweto uh, with the whole choir and, and, and the gospel choir yeah. and the symphony and then do uh, the setup, which is this, all that's extremely expensive and time-consuming, of course. Um, you know, yeah, and, and thank you that yeah, you, you still do CDs. There, some people still don't, but I, I'm I, I I'm old school, and I, I still like to have a CD in my hand and and to do yeah. that. Yeah, I think I think we um, you know we asked uh, we we had to think about it um, for this year, but I think we're still in CD land, but it's limited. You know, mm-hmm. we um, it's going to change. Many people like oh, my laptop doesn't have a CD drive anymore. Oh my. And, um, and many people's cars now, the new cars don't have CD drives. So mm-hmm. soon people won't be able to play yes. CDs. So, you yeah. know, we, we as musicians probably will have to. But, you know, it's so beautiful to have the, the booklet yes. and the artwork. Yes. And, and this book, I, 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 imagine. I, I have to say great graphics. And, and yes, this CD um, does have beautiful booklets and wonderful pictures, very artistically and graphically done. Um, with the story, and it's nice to be able to look at the uh, pictures and see the story. And of course, people can see it um, on your website as well, uh, because yeah. you, you have that there as well. But uh, yes, I am a fan. <laughs> I am a fan. And yeah. this release is benefiting the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Um, so That's ye- right. yay on on that as well. Um, you know, at some point, you know, I can just tell the people who are musicians who are just dedicating their life to serve. And, and uh, Walter, you, you certainly are one of them. Yes, you know, that's how I feel. You know, we, we don't make, we spend a lot of money on the albums, but we don't make anything because it all, all goes to charity. It goes to Nelson Mandela Foundation and the SOS Children's Villages. Um, and then uh, we try and make the money through through concerts and shows. You know, that's our model and that's how we survive and that's what keeps the wolf from the door. Um, so, um, you know, but our mission is to spread the good music and spread good energy. And that's the main the money is secondary. We just, um, you know, we just want to be able to continue. So we need to make some money so that we can keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's our, that's our model. You know, I don't, I don't think it's realistic these days. CDs sales don't bring no. a lot of money, you no. know, no. um, and especially if you're like me and you end up spending much more than you plan. You yes, <laughs> and, and you always, budget. any project, <laughs> any project you do in music is more than you planned, right? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a project that came in under budget? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it, do- it doesn't happen. And that doesn't include your travel expenses and everything you have to do as well, you know. So I, I just, I applaud you. It's, it's, I know it's late there in South Africa, so I s- really super appreciate uh, you taking the time to call in and uh, give us a little backstory about this amazing release. I encourage everyone to uh, go, and this Friday it'll be out. You can buy it. Um, Symphonic Soweto, it's a tribute to Nelson Mandela with the Soweto Gospel Choir and the wonderful uh, KwaZulu NATO Philharmonic and Angelique Kijo. Um, it's it's just a, a wonderful tribute work that will live on for a long, 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 probably longer than we're alive. The, there'll be people listening to this this wonderful <laughs> CD. So it's a legacy piece, I think, as well. So 
uh, uh, congratulations to you, and I, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to call in from South Africa and talk to us today. Thank you so much. And um, uh, we do have a website specifically for the CD called symphonicsoweto.com. Oh, good. That's good to know. Symphonicsoweto.com. So yeah. there, everything is there, all the videos, the music, photos, behind the scenes, footage, um, uh, all the liner notes, uh, credits, everything is on there. Wonderful. That's spelled S O W E T O, Symphonic Soweto. Dot com. Yeah. Well, get some sleep. Thank you so much for, for <laughs> calling and, and have a good trip to India. Um, we'll probably see you at one of the uh, Grammy events somewhere along the way, and I wish you the very best. Thank you, Cindy. Yes, I will. We'll be there in, in January in New York, and uh, hope to see you there. It'll yes. be nice to catch up again. Yes. A big alo- thanks, aloha thanks, from thanks. Maui. Maybe one day you can bring that whole event over here. We'll, we'll play in Maui. <laughs> would love to. I'd love, love to, too. Absolutely love to. It'd be great. <laughs> Everyone would love it here, too. Aloha to you, my friend. Thanks to you, too, Cindy. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.